What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. Now right now you might be taking advanced mathematics in years 11 or 12 and you might be finding it tough. You know, you're struggling uh, to keep up, you know, the pace is really quick, the marks that you got recently weren't that crash hot, and maybe your school has even approached you and they've suggested that you drop down from advanced maths down to standard maths. And perhaps you're thinking about it. You know, it sounds pretty good, easier maths, it's going to be less work, maybe get better ATAR, like all of that sounds pretty awesome. But in this video, what I'm going to share with you is three reasons why you should not, that's right, not drop down from advanced maths to standard maths. While it can look good initially, the truth is there's a lot of painful consequences that you might not have thought about or been aware of if you drop down from advanced to standard maths. So let's find out what the three reasons are why you should not drop to standard maths. So the first reason, and perhaps the most important initial reason why you should not drop from advanced to standard maths, is that ultimately advanced maths is a prerequisite for a lot of courses at university. Not only is it a prerequisite, it's also assumed knowledge for a lot of other courses. And so this means that if you drop down from advanced to standard, you can actually be limiting the options that you have for both courses and universities when you graduate. So as an example, Sydney University have now put in a requirement for pretty much all of their degrees except the humanities, right? So law, uh, communications, politics related degrees. For all their other degrees though, they've made a requirement, a prerequisite that you needed to have taken advanced mathematics and scored a band four, which is a 70 to 80% mark in your HSC. And the reason for that is that, you know, as a university and, and the other universities have also recognize this, although they've responded in a different way, Sydney particularly have recognized that students are coming to university in most cases with an insufficient foundation of mathematics and mathematical ability. So they're struggling at university. And so Sydney Uni has decided to hold the line here. Now my point being is that if you therefore drop down from uh, you know, advanced to standard, uh, you're basically saying, well, you know what, I'm not going to go to Sydney University. I'm going to cut Sydney University off as an option for a bunch of courses that I might want to do. Now, look, you might be thinking, but surely I can do a bridging course or something to get in. Well, look, Sydney University have said, look, no bridging course will be allowed. You'll need to go and do like a Bachelor of Arts degree, and then you'll need to do first year mathematics subjects at university in semester one and two, and then you can transfer. So it's going to take you an extra year to get into your gold degree if you want to go to Sydney University. Now you might think, well, you know what, I don't want to go to Sydney University, that's fine, I'm happy. Yes, my, my, you know, I need it as a prerequisite or as assumed knowledge, but Sydney Uni is not for me. I'll still drop and go to one of these other universities and I'll do maybe a bridging course to get in. And the truth is that even at these other universities, right, if you can get in with assumed knowledge or a prerequisite, uh, the bridging courses are a week. They're teaching you the entirety of a HSC course in a week. So you're not really learning a whole lot that's gonna stick with you. And so it means that, first of all, if you haven't done uh, you know, the, the advanced mathematics and it's a prerequisite, you're gonna limit the options that you have for going and studying that course at that university. Secondly, if it's you know, maybe a bridging course available, yes, you can go down that pathway, but being really honest, I find so many students that have done that pathway get in and they just struggle massively anyway. So the first reason here is you need to make sure that if you're thinking about dropping from advanced to standard, that it's not a prerequisite for a course that you want to do at university, or it's not, you know, Sydney University that you really want to go to, because it's going to otherwise limit the options that you have for university and you know, ultimately, you really want to have the most opportunities and the most options that you can possibly have when you graduate. So that's reason number one. So if the degree you're wanting to study at university has advanced math as assumed knowledge, you might be thinking, well, fantastic. I can drop down to standard maths. It's only assumed knowledge for my degree. It's not a prerequisite. So that means that I can, you know, take the easy maths at, at you know, high school, Right, get the better ATAR, go to university and still study my degree. Win-win, right? You know, easy maths, get into degree, not a prereq. Seems like that's when you should drop down to standard maths. But is it really? 
Well, look, one of the big things that I see is a lot of students do drop down on the basis of this. You know, they go, well, it's assumed knowledge. I don't need to do it. I'm going to drop. But, but the truth is, if the university has said assumed knowledge, guess what? They assume that you know the advanced mathematics course. And so by the time you get into university, you're then going to be studying subjects that are going to require that, that advanced level of mathematic knowledge. Now, you know, that's going to be challenging because university comes thick and fast. The pace is quicker, first of all. So you're going to have to learn a lot in a very quick amount of time. Secondly, you don't have the same amount of support that you do when you're in school, right? When you're in your school, it's maybe 20 students in your class with your teacher. You know your teacher personally. You can ask them lots of questions. They'll often, you know, stay back maybe and help you out, offer to, you know, to, to help you in lunch sometimes. So you're going to get a lot more support from your teacher in your school if you're struggling with maths at school. It's also a lot easier to find a tutor, right? There's so many people that can provide support for HSC mathematics. We're one of them. If you need help, get in touch. But seriously, it's a lot easier to find support. When you go to university, it can be really challenging because each of the courses at the different unis are a little different, and so people don't feel comfortable and confident tutoring the subject necessarily, even if they might know the content. And so what I see happen as a result is a lot of students do this. They drop down a standard maths, they go to university with a degree that had assumed knowledge advanced mathematics, and then they really struggle. They struggle with the material, uh, you know, it's challenging and they don't get the support that they need. And in some cases, they fail subjects at university, right? They fail them, they've got to retake them, and it's a really, really challenging journey. So my point here is, and this is reason number two, is that it's either going to be hard now or it's going to be hard later. You get to choose when it's going to be hard. And so really, you want to choose the hard when you've got the most support. And that's really going to be during high school, when you've got the most help available. So that's reason number two why you should not actually drop from advanced maths down to standard maths. So the third reason why you should not drop from advanced to standard maths is that ultimately, if you're going to pick a degree at university that requires mathematics, right, subjects that need mathematics, uh, you know, to be honest, with one in three university graduates unable to find a full-time job with the degree it's pretty competitive out there to get, you know, work, full-time work in your chosen area. So, you know, you could go into your degree and have not a great foundation in maths, even if maths is important, muddy your way through the degree, right, and then get out and end up, because you don't have, you know, a, an excellence and a mastery that you've built in, in maths and in those key subjects, you may find that it's actually harder for you to get a job. You'll be less employable. So honestly, if you're thinking longer term, if you're thinking, you know what, I actually want to really develop a career in this particular area, it actually makes sense to take the time to develop mastery of maths if it's required for that degree and for that profession, right? Yes, you know, the easy option seemingly is to just take the hack and, and to not worry about it, but ultimately if you want to stand out differentiate yourself from a, a competitive crowd, you're going to need to develop mastery for maths, particularly if it's assumed knowledge or a prerequisite. And so that's where I'd certainly recommend, right, that you take the time to just get good at maths rather than avoiding the hard work that's associated with it. And so that's why if you think long-term, really, and you think long-term about your career, if maths is required as part of, you know, prereq assumed knowledge for the degree as well, then you should work on taking advanced math now when the support's greater so that you can develop that mastery for the long term. So that's reason number three. So the first reason why you might actually drop down from advanced to standard maths and why it might be a good idea is honestly, if you've looked at all the university courses you're thinking about studying and none of them have maths, advanced mathematics as either a prerequisite or assumed knowledge. This means that it really doesn't matter if you take maths from a university point of view. Sure, it'll be helpful for you personally, right, so that you can just better navigate the world around you, but ultimately it's not going to make a difference from a university point of view. So in a case like this, continuing to do advanced mathematics is just going to be punishment, right? There's no reason for you to continue with it. And so in this case, this is reason one, where maths is not a prereq or an assumed knowledge for a university degree, that it makes sense to actually drop down from advanced down to standard mathematics. So the second reason you might seriously think about 
dropping from advanced to standard is perhaps you're doing advanced and it's taking a lot of time, like it's sucking your time, your energy, and even more importantly, your confidence. So you're doing all this work, all this time, and you're getting poor results. Now, the danger here is that it could actually cause you to have a crisis of confidence, which could spill over into your other subjects. So it could mean that you're actually starting to do worse, not just in advanced maths, but in all your subjects, because you lack confidence as a result, and because you don't have as much time to put in the effort. So you need to think about this. You know, the, the truth is, if you're finding that there's a risk that it's going to do that, or it's already doing that for your other subjects, well, it makes more sense, regardless of some of the bigger picture, long-term reasons that I've shared in this video, to drop down to standard. Because if that's gonna help you stay confident, have more time, and therefore do better across all your subjects, that's ultimately what you should focus on. Because the HSC isn't, a, you know, it isn't a journey that rewards you for mastery of a single subject. It's about breath. It's about rewarding you for mastery across a range. And so you can't just focus on one subject to the exclusion of all others. So this is a really good reason why you might drop down from advanced to standard to ensure that you can actually do your best across the entirety of your HSC as opposed to a single subject. So the final reason why it might make sense to drop down from advanced to standard is that actually dropping down can help your ATAR. Now what this means is that, and it's weird, but the scaled marks for getting a band five and six in advanced maths are pretty similar to the scale marks that you would get going towards your ATAR in standard maths if you get a band five and six. So it means that if you're really struggling at advanced maths, but you know that if you drop down, you can score an 80 to 90% mark, it's actually going to help your ATAR. That's right. So it could mean that by dropping down, you actually improve your results because it's a lot easier to get a band six in standard maths and therefore you get a better ATAR and then by getting the better ATAR, you get into the course that you really wanna get into at university. So the decision here that you should think about is, well, first of all, you know, are you likely to get over 80% in advanced maths? Even, you know, over 70%, right? Uh, if, if you are, then it's probably better to keep it, particularly if it's going to help you for prerequisites assume knowledge. But if you're going below that and it's not really needed as a prereq or assume knowledge, then you know what, dropping down is gonna really help your ATAR and it's not gonna have any negative implications in terms of reducing your options for university courses. On the flip side here though is that, you know, look, you could still drop down and improve your ATAR. That's still gonna be a positive for you. But remember, okay, remember that if you drop down and you get the better ATAR, you might have less options anyway. So you've gotta weigh this up. So that's the third and final reasons why it might actually be beneficial to drop from advanced to standard. So look, overall, I hope I've given you lots of practical things to think about, right? So that you can actually make a, a logical, well thought out decision rather than a gut decision, I hate advanced maths, I'm dropping it. Because it can have quite long-term consequences for you that can make that transition to uni more challenging. If you have any questions about this, leave it in the comments below, we'd love to help. Additionally, if you need to chat with one of our team in person, uh, you know, we have a team that can provide some mentoring advice around the decision and the implications it can have for you, for your university options, and of course, for your ATAR. Finally, if you're taking either advanced maths or standard maths and you're needing some help, advanced maths because you're struggling, we've got an incredible team of teachers, tutors, and mentors, both one-on-one -on -one and in small classes that can help you. And equally, if you've dropped down from advanced to standard and you're needing to catch up on all of the standard content. We've also got some incredible team that can support you for standard maths to get up to speed. So if you haven't, get in touch with us, artofsmart.com.au and hit the get in touch button. Now, of course, finally, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We do videos every single week. So I will see you next week.